I remember first seeing Doom in a PC gaming magazine back in 1993. Don't really know which one, but what I remember seeing were just a couple of screenshots of like the MO, the demons, and it was pretty much a small article describing the game. To me, it looked awesome. However, it was more of an object of envy or a game of envy because I didn't have a computer at the time. I wouldn't see this game again until about a year later when I first came home from school and saw that Doom was being played on, on my TV. Someone actually rented it and then plugged it into a 32X. And when I got my hands on the controller, that was it. I became an instant Doom fan. Exploring 3D mazes, shooting and killing demons. This new style of play, which would later be known as, as FPS, first person shooters, caught my attention and never let go. In the coming years, I would discover that the 32X version was missing a couple of things. Scrap that, it was missing a lot of stuff. We're talking about entire chapter, bosses, weapons, levels. I was actually ticked off at my friend who owned the PC original. He would tell me about his fights with the Cyber Demon and Spider Mastermind, hidden levels. I was getting frustrated and kind of upset and a tad bit jealous. Fortunately, I would later purchase Doom on the PlayStation, then later on the PC once prices went down. However, with these new discoveries and new ports, it will lower my opinion of the 32X version. I will later discover that this port was kind of done in a rush and in order to make it in time for the launch of the 32X. And for a long time, I really did think that that was the best a 32X could do. It felt disappointing in a way. However, Sega's 32-bit add-on was capable of so much more. Before I continue, I gotta give my props to Victor Luchitz, the creator of this hack. He took a version that was considerably gimped and modified it to be on par, if not superior, to other ports. Now, gameplay feels more complete. Demons now have all viewing angles, which means you can sneak up behind them and witness monster infighting. This was a big element missing from the original port, which made the game a little more difficult in some respects. Nearby enemies can now be alert of your presence when a weapon is fired. Though personally, I think this feature is a bit too sensitive since demons that are nearby rooms get alerted to your presence. It does change the flow of the game somewhat, but it's not all that bad. However, what's probably the most significant addition would be the reintroduction of the Cyber Demon and the Spider Mastermind. These bosses were absent in the original release, and finally facing these guys on the 32X makes this version feel much more whole as well as a bit challenging. And a nice bonus to this hack is actual split screen multiplayer. You could team up with a buddy and take on the forces of hell in co-op or blast each other to smithereens in deathmatch. And if this is not to your liking, you could always connect two consoles together 
using the zero tolerance link cable. Though finding another 32X TV and supporting flash cart would be kind of hard to come by. Graphics are highly adjustable. Unlike the original release, this game is no longer regulated to a small screen with a border around it. Doom on 32X cannot be played in full screen, topping out at 20 frames a second at 320 by 180. However, you could also increase the performance by turning off high color or toning down the resolution to 128 by 144. Increasing the speed up to 30 frames a second, though personally, I like to keep things at max setting since the dips in performance isn't all that bad and hardly noticeable. Though I do tend to drop the resolution to 160 by 180 when, when I know the action is going to be rough. It does make it kind of look like the SNS Doom in a way, but honestly, I'm not too bothered by it. The gems generating music is now gone. What takes its place is high quality FM synthesized tracks courtesy of Spoonie Bard. These tunes make excellent use of the YM2612 sound chip, giving us awesome renditions of Bobby Prince's tunes that any Doom fan can appreciate. But for those of you who have access to the Tower of Power, you can utilize the Sega CD to play any music CD in your collection. However, for the best experience, I do recommend burning a copy of the IDFK Doom soundtrack by Andrew Halschel onto a blank CD and immerse yourself to one of the best versions of Doom music out there. Though you will have to rearrange the tracks around a little bit before burning just to get the right music onto the right levels. Sound effects haven't changed much. This hack still retains the same quality as before and the 32X pulse wave modulator definitely gives the sound effects a distinctive pop. But when connected to a Sega CD, you can offset the sound effects to it, freeing up processing power and increasing performance. Though I really don't notice a difference besides the sound effects sounding a little duller, but it's neat to have that option, so I can't really complain. Controls are still fast and responsive as ever, so I really can't say much there. But what I can say is that the bun layout is more customizable than before. You have the option to keep running all the time, eliminating the need to hold down the run button while playing. Sidestepping could also be assigned to, to the face buttons, making it easier to circle strafe around enemies. This is especially useful to those players who own the M30 Genesis controller from 8-Bit Do. On that controller, the L and R buttons are doubled as Z and C, making it possible to perform movements closer to that of the PlayStation version. The overall presentation has actually been improved. The title screen that was on the PlayStation and Saturn port are actually here now that managed to get the flames and the Doom logo raising working on the 32X. And I gotta say, I'm pretty impressed by seeing that. However, there are two things that are missing that I wish were still included in this hack. I know I'm probably asking for too much and I'm probably nitpicking, but I think I still have to point it out. What I miss would be the completion screen from the, from the PC and pretty much any current port. You know the screen I'm talking about, like when you complete a level, 
the percentages are tallied up and you're basically shown where you are on the on the map that's what i miss it's like a progress screen for the episode and the other thing would be the intermission between episodes i love these points because it does explain the story a little bit fleshing out the doom universe somewhat making you look forward to what's happening next still the overall package is impressive considering the hardware And there you have it guys, Doom Resurrection on the Sega Genesis 32X. I gotta say that this is my most favorite hack out of any game. It takes a cut up gimped version of Doom and makes it complete. And plus it gives you loads of options. We're talking about like audio options, you know, graphical options, you know, changing the resolution, control options. The amount of like customization in this game is surreal. And this was a Doom that we needed back in the day. And the fact that it took so long is a little bittersweet. But now that it's here, I replayed it again and had loads of fun. The only downside is that you need like a 32X and a flash card to get it working. And if you want the extra audio options like, like you know using the, the Sega CD for, for sound effects and audio, then that's an, extra <laughs> that's an extra thing that might be hard to come by nowadays. But if you have that stuff, yeah, go for it. If you're gonna play this on the emulator, might as well just play it on, on the computer because that, that you'll be getting a much more authentic Doom experience that way. Anyway, this was Knockout 21. Please comment, rate, subscribe, and like always, have a good one. Take care, guys.